July 10th, 2103. Sherlock Holmes left me a message at Baker Street saying he had discovered the whereabouts of the arch-villain Moriarty and could not wait for my return. I readied the coachcraft and hurried off in pursuit. The laser wave sanitation grid vaporizes all falling debris. Not even New Scotland Yard will be able to find any trace of you. Dash it, Holmes. You should never have gone off without me. It's not over yet. Whoa. No victory for you tonight, Holmes. What's this? <laughs> the game ends here. That's how you do it, love. Good luck with the tournament. I don't need luck. Later. Your partner better show or we win the tournament. <laughs> Chill out. Ronnie will be here. He already is. Why are you in such a rush to lose? We won't, if you don't cheat. When you're as good as I am, you don't have to. Here, this is yours. Nice. Five Five seconds, seconds to airtime. Players, take your places. Coming at you live from the Holocade, it's the fifth annual televised Holocade Tournament. On Team 1, we have April Murray and John Hardy going up against Thomas Moran and Ronald Adair of Team 2. These four champions are about to compete in level 10 of Alienator Attack. Contestants, charge your blasters. Blasters must be recharged every 10 shots. Shoot the targets as they drop. If you miss and your target hits you, your blaster will lose its power and will have to be recharged. We know the rules, mate. Make sure you play by them. Alienator level 10 commences now. my best friends, not once, but for the second time.
Computer, display list one. No, that's impossible. It can't be. Computer, display list two. Yes, yes, this is more like it. But how could this happen? Inspector Lestrade. Good to see you too, Watson. I'm sorry, but... Come on, no time to waste. I've been stuck all night investigating a break-in at Sir Hargreaves' laboratory. I'm sorry, Inspector. I don't think I can face an investigation on my own. Watson, the best thing for you to do <sighs> is just that. We both miss him terribly, but the wheels of justice must keep turning. He'd want it that way. And besides, I have a need for your particular training. Pardon? I'll explain another way. Prepare yourself, Watson. His name's Ronald Adair. Oh dear, he's been frozen solid. <gasps> Pretty cold, huh? Whoever this perpetrator was, he's been taking lessons from Moriarty. Is he? No, he's a popsicle, but he's still breathing. Lucky for him, he has a persistent mother. When he didn't answer any of her voice messages, she called us. The doctors say it'll take him 72 hours to thaw out. No harm done. But someone sure didn't want him walking around for a few days. We could wait to question him, but whoever did this would be long gone. Hmm. I assume the door was locked when you arrived and you were let in? You're right. The landlord let us in. How did you know? Eyes and brains, Inspector. Eyes and brains. The door locks from inside and it's well scuffed, indicating considerable usage. Since the door frame wasn't broken, it told me someone had a key. Hmm. Now look at these numbers. Column 1, 118,000. 245,000, 99,000, 325,000, column 2, 115,000, 195,000, 71,000, 226,000. They mean... they mean... Oh, dash it all! I don't know what they mean. I've been fooling myself. I'm not Holmes. I miss him. You and me both, Watson. Inspector, we found this character snooping around outside. Claims he has business with the Ice Man here. Move aside, move aside, young man. I'm a law-abiding citizen. You can't hold me up. Hmm, not good, not good at all. Hmm, he won't be needing these game discs now, will he? All right, hold it right there, sir. I think I have a few questions for you. Oh, me? <laughs> Forget about me. Well, if I'm not needed here, I must be going. Halt! Oh. The computer disc? Well, it's, it's a game disc, that's all. The young man likes to play games, he did. So do you. The disc you put into the computer was blue. You're coming with us. Oh, no, no, I can't. Much too busy. Here, take your own disc! <laughs> Stop him! <laughs> Be on the lookout for an old man in a trench coat, beard, long hair, detained for questioning. <laughs> All area units respond! Blast it! <coughs> Find him! I want a hairnet over this area now! He was a spry one. Exactly. I don't know who he is, but I intend to find out. That's as close as you're gonna get, Yardies. Next time, Yardies. Next time. His door was locked from the inside, yet the young man was somehow frozen. Who could have done such a horrendous deed, and why? That's what I intend to find out. We're going to the Holocake studio. Ronnie Adair couldn't hit the side of a starship from the inside. He's still got the highest score. And I'd like to know how. Sure, that's not just sour grapes. Not likely. I'm a lot better than he is. Ask anyone. The tournament doesn't need cheaters bringing the game down. Well, April Murray is definitely not the president of the Ronnie Adair fan club. <gasps> Inspector! What is it, Watson? I believe we have company. 
the old man. He was just here. Who said robots were infallible anyway? No, I'm not happy. We almost lost the tournament because of Ronnie. And now I've got to play the final round by myself. Fortunately, I never miss. The other team thinks he cheated. <clears throat> I don't know about that. But I gotta wonder how he got off so many shots. What do you mean? <clears throat> I'm the fastest there is. And according to the game computers, I squeezed off a thousand shots. Ronnie took almost 1,500. That's impossible. You gotta recharge every 10 shots. You mean he cheated? You're the Yardie. You tell me. Look at this, Watson. I found another list of numbers. Huh. What do you make of it? This is odd. The blaster's power control cutoff switch has been bypassed. That's it, Watson. That's how Ronnie Adair cheated. We know the other blasters had to be recharged, but Adair's blaster never ran out of power. He didn't have to have great aim. He could just keep shooting until he got a better score. Murray or Hardy must have figured out he was cheating and put him on ice for the rest of the tournament. They must really want to win. You stay here and figure out what those numbers mean. I'm gonna have the lab boys check these parts for trace evidence. Hmm. This all seems much too simple. Holmes always said never to accept your first conclusion, no matter how perfect it appears. Dig, he said. Discover the truth beneath the lies. Oh, lies? Lies, you say? Oh, what do you know of lies, eh? You've been following me, old man. Perhaps you're the guilty party. Me? The guilty party? Good heavens, Watson. Haven't I always told you? <gasps> Eyes and brains, man. Eyes and brains. Holmes, you're alive! Thank heavens! But I thought I saw you and Moriarty vaporize. Think, man. You saw flashes of light, that's all. Base your deductions on facts, never on assumptions. Moriarty was almost subdued when a light from far off broke through the dark and momentarily blinded you. Suddenly, I slipped on a patch of formed ice. Moriarty lunged for me, and we both fell to what should have been our doom. I may have been temporarily blinded, but my mind was still sharp, and my reflexes even sharper. But I had to convince Moriarty's accomplice that I had indeed perished at his hand, and so I hatched a most clever scheme. Alas, I wasn't the only clever one. As you shall soon discover. I presume, Watson, you do realize that one and the same man caused my supposed demise, Mr. Adair's frozen condition, and the theft at Professor Hargreaves' laboratory. I do? They are? Ice, Watson. Ice in July. I slipped on ice. Cryogenic projector was stolen from Hargreaves' laboratory. Connect the dots, Watson. And then Adair was found frozen like an icicle. I didn't put it together. That is because you didn't pay attention to what was plainly before you. The ice I slipped on was created by the cryogenic projector. The blinding light was the projector's targeting light. And it was obviously fired at me by an accomplice of Moriarty. But who that is remains to be seen. Now, do you remember what Adair had on his computer? Numbers? Words? I haven't yet deduced their significance. That is because they are not just numbers. They are the game scores for Alienator Attack. T-78, T for Thomas Moran. Score, 78. R for Ronald Adair. J for John Hardy. A for April Murray. Simple. But what do they mean? That Ronald Adair was not cheating. He wasn't? It's elementary, my dear Watson. Think, why would a man accused of dishonesty chart out the suspect game scores as well as inspect the gun he himself supposedly tampered with? Does every criminal need a reason for his actions? There is always a reason if one searches deep enough. For example, what if the man is actually innocent and was trying to prove he has been set up to appear guilty? Now come. It was just frozen over, like Ronald Adair. As I imagined. We have a fair view from this empty house. Come now, the game is afoot. But who shot at you? 
an expert marksman. But we already knew that, didn't we? Mm. Of course we did. You said the glare of light that blinded you came from far off. Excellent. Go on. And Adair's apartment fronted the Thames. Whoever froze him had to shoot from the opposite shore. Not a simple task. But why have we come here? Because our ice-wielding friend should have already arrived. Holmes! Steady, Watson. <laughs> what was that? Just playing with the machines. Games, Holmes. Are you all right, Holmes? For the moment. What? Follow me. Moriarty took no chances. If he failed to destroy me, his accomplice would do it for him. Fortunately, they both failed. At least for the moment. You won't escape me, Holmes. Moriarty paid too much for me to let you live. Excellent aim! But then you are the best, aren't you? Playing video games is just practice for your real job, isn't it? No! You want me! I am here for you! Then it's over! You're right, Holmes. I don't need this game. But I won't leave without my prize! Hold him, Watson! We're almost there! is our mysterious attacker. Surely, Watson, there can be no doubt. Who I am no longer matters. You're both being put on ice until I can get out of this dump. Moran? Of course, Watson. He is the mercenary Moriarty hired and equipped to eliminate me. It is rather a compliment in a way. But why would a mercenary play a holiday game? Target practice, of course. And being a professional, his ego demanded his team had to win. Unfortunately, Ronnie wasn't that good. Which is why he had to alter his blaster. Here, this is yours. Nice. He needed the edge. And, of course, if your ruse was discovered, he would be blamed for cheating and not you. He went home and calculated the scores. He was going to show the rig blaster to the judges, but you wouldn't allow that. I like to win, and I always do. Moran, freeze! <laughs> no! You freeze! Huh? Whoa, uh. Sorry, Moran. The Cold War is over. I hope you'll enjoy playing your games in prison. I found your DNA all over that rigged blaster. I still don't understand one thing, Holmes. How did you know Moriarty was still alive and would still be hunting you? Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary physics, that is. Moriarty and I fell off the level at the same time. The physics demands both bodies should have hit the grid at the same time. They did? I saw. Remember, I caught the bottom of the level, then dropped a rock to the sanitation grid. Had Moriarty actually fallen, he would have hit the grid long before my rock. That you saw two simultaneous flashes is proof he saved himself, as did I. Now, come. Moriarty is still out there. And this day has just begun. <laughs>